kids, listen up. I'm going to show you how to start a real session here. All right. See this time code? Uh, zero, zero, zero. That's fine. Usually uh, when people import their clip into their timeline to start their movie and start editing away, they just pull it in like that, and there they go. You know, that's nice starting at zero, 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 but that's not how we do it upstairs. And uh, I'm going to get rid of that sequence I just created. So actually, uh, if you want to learn how to do it like the big kids, let me show you. I've uh, created a sequence here, and uh, I will show you how to put the sequence together yourself if you want to know in the next video. But uh, let me explain first what this is. Uh, this is color bars with tone and uh, a title card, a two pop, and then our film. There's our color bars and tones. And this is uh, used, it, especially, you know, if you're copying something from your computer to a camera or to another device, it's nice to be able to just play the color bars and see the tone. And if you have it hooked up to your other device, you'll see it and you'll know that your signal is good. And then you start it from where you started it. Now, uh, before, when I made the session here, I went, I made some markers. Uh, first it was of the bars and tones, which there are a minute of. Oh, and also look at this. At the beginning of our session, it starts at 58 minutes and 30 seconds, zero frames. That way we can have a minute's worth of bars and tones, 10 seconds of black, 10 seconds of the title card, another 10 seconds of black, and then our film. That way, uh, our film actually starts at, let's see, where is it? There's the beginning. I put a marker right at the one hour mark. So we have a minute and a half worth of setup materials here, which are the bars and tones, which we talked about, but there's also the title card, which is important. Uh, the title of the movie, producer name, total running time, audio format, aspect ratio, version date. No, not virgin date, it's version date. And this, this is actually the most important part of this title card because an editor will do many versions of the same movie and before if you send out a version of a movie to be scored by a, a composer or have fully done or sound design any of that stuff you want to make sure that everybody's working on the same version if you don't that's going to cost you a lot of money in overtime and post-production expenses that you don't want so after you've done your final edit then you, you send it out and you say final version uh, here and maybe put the date date is optional but it's nice to have then you'll have uh, 10 seconds of black actually there's if we you can't see it at this altitude but if you move in a little closer and I actually have a uh, a two pop marker already made and we zoom in a little closer you can see that we have our two pop in place which is two seconds before the first frame of our film and there it is and then our movie starts so that's it uh, color bars and tones for alignment pur purposes uh, 10 seconds of black then uh, about 10 seconds of your title card, uh, 10 seconds of black after the title card, followed by the two pop, and then your movie. And I actually put uh, a marker at the very end of the movie too, so that when I'm done and I just want to export the movie without the two pop or color bars or any of that stuff, I'll come over here to our sequence window and uh, actually, oh, click on the marker for the end of the movie, come back over here and push out, uh, go to the start film marker, come back over to the sequence, hit I for in, and now I can just export my movie from this point. And that way I, I know I haven't accidentally 
included my two pop, which nobody wants to see. The two pop is only there for sync purposes between your video editor and Pro Tools, which is for the sound. In the next video, I'll show you how to put this together along with a window burn. That's what this is. It's a running time code for reference purposes. Uh, I'll show you how to make that. It's a good thing to have so that on the, the reference video that you send out to your composer or sound designer, you can say, you know, at a minute 53, I want a certain sound there to last all the way to like 2 minutes 21 seconds. So it's nice to have that time code reference in the video, within the video itself. Anyway, I'll show you how to put all this together in the next video.